welcome to the Custom Made in New York podcast. My name is Raven, and today we are going to talk about healthy relationships. Can a relationship become better? When do you know it's over? What's the correct way to end it? And how do you bounce back? I decided to talk about this because... I learned some things from my students. So I am a teacher. I teach in, at a high school. And not only do I teach history, but I also teach in advisory. And a part of the advisory curriculum is health. And uh, there was one month that we were talking about healthy relationships. And I swear to you, every time I had a conversation with my students, my 14 and 15 year old and 16, well, they're 15 going on 16 year old, they were teaching me something about myself. I'm learning from these babies about how to have a good relationship. So one of the questions that was asked in the advisory as a reflection, we talked about it. And one of the students wrote, the question I think was along the lines of, can a relationship become better? If so, how? So one of these young ladies, she's very quiet, but she's extremely bright. And I'm reading her reflection. I'm like, oh wow, like she's saying some stuff that I need to take notes about. So she says, it is possible for a bad relationship to improve. Yes, I personally feel as though it is possible. However, it would take time. Most people would expect a bad relationship to immediately get better. Most people would expect a bad relationship to immediately get better once the issues are addressed, but that's not the case. For a bad relationship to improve, the partner should confess how they truly feel regarding certain aspects or problems. A breakup may even be necessary. Relationships can get better as long as both people try. This 14-year-old, well, she just turned 15 a couple of weeks ago. She just turned 15. Is is speaking. She's preaching right now. Like, yes, relationships can improve when two people want to make it happen. So, yes, it is so important to be honest in a relationship. Even when you feel like it's going to offend somebody, if it's something that's deep in your soul is getting to you and it's turning you off or pushing you away apart from the relationship, if you really want it to work, then you have to find a way to have that conversation. And it's not about attacking. It's about what is it that I learned in one of my professional developments is I feel or this thing that you do specifically You not making it home on time to put the baby to bed makes me feel like you don't appreciate how hard I work during the day. So it's not you're attacking the person like, you don't know how to act, you're a bastard, you're this. No, you're explaining like when you do this specific action, it makes me feel like this. And I feel like if your partner hears you and, and really cares and appreciates that, like this student said, they're going to make the change. It may not happen as soon as you want it to happen, but you have to trust that it's going to happen. But that's the thing too, right? Like you have the conversation and these behaviors that that really are pushing you away or continue to happen. Like when do you know to give up on that? Like when do you know not to keep trying or to walk away like, do you have a set date? Is it two weeks? Is it, a, is it a month? Is it three weeks? When do you know that you should walk away from a situation? That is a question I have for you all. I couldn't get in um, contact with the social worker I was discussing this topic with before, but that came up as I was thinking and writing uh, my script. I was just wondering, like, when do you know? What I would say you do know when things are ending is when they start to be distant. Like if you know that you're close with somebody and they want to spend time away from you, nothing has happened in their life that you know of. And they're like, things like Netflix. You and that person watch Netflix all the time. Orange is the New Black, that's your thing. You watch it every week, same time, same place. And they decide that instead of them spending time with you to watch this, they are making excuses as to why they don't, or they decided, oh, I'm going to watch it at this time at work during my lunch break rather than waiting to watch with you. Or you notice that when you spend time with this person, 
they don't seem to want to spend time with you or they like rushing to leave you. That's another sign that there's something up. Most importantly for me, I feel like I know the vibe. Like nobody can tell me something's not off and I'm like, I feel it. I feel change immediately. Even if I don't know what it is about, like when somebody moves differently, that for me is a sign that things are ending. But according to the counselors, everything a person does annoys their partner. That means like it's coming to an end. If you sneeze or you're chewing loudly, this is something, mind you, that you've done since the beginning of the relationship. But if it bothers the next person, then it's probably like they're getting turned off. They're probably not interested anymore. So yeah. Or even arguments are happening constantly, more frequently than than it was before. So say, for instance, you know how you're supposed to pick your battles. So not everything that somebody does, you should be arguing over. But if you see that you're arguing over every little thing, like, why did you leave the um, toilet seat up? Why is that left sock on the floor? Like, come on. Why didn't you wash the dishes before you went to bed? You're arguing over every little thing and you can't find a compromise on that situation, then it's coming to an end, according to counselors. But I would say there are ways to uh, end relationships when you see that you're not interested anymore or you see that this person's not interested anymore. And this was something that I learned from my students in the discussion as well. Apparently, there is a correct way to end a relationship. I learned this from my students. I am guilty of not appropriately ending a relationship. I was called a coward because I decided to end a relationship through text message. They didn't directly call me a coward, but the prompt was up. They were responding to it and they were like, yeah, if you can't end it face to face, you're a coward. Like, and I'm just like, oof, that hit a nerve because I've done that, not even realizing that they are totally right. These 15 year olds are totally right. So a healthy way to end a relationship is face to face. And you should think about what you're gonna say before you say it. And it should be in a place that's mutual for the both of you. And when you're ending it with someone, it's not the time to bash. That's one thing. Like it's not the time to put somebody down. It's the time to just say thank you for the situation, but it's not working because of X, Y, and Z. You don't have to go into detail like you left the toilet seat up and you forgot to lock the door and you didn't wash the dishes. Like it's not like that. There's just things that you value more that are very important to you that you can't compromise on and this person may not be for you. You understand? But it's not a time to be like, you're an asshole. No. No name calling when you're putting an end to a relationship. So be respectful and make sure that conversation's face to face. Hmm. Yeah, so it is difficult, very difficult to get through a relationship. Some people it's easy. I have had situations where the relationship has ended and I've been fine, like seriously, no tears. Like it's just, it didn't work. And I have had situations where I'm just like, oh no, like, it's the end of the world, you know? So how do you bounce back after a relationship? I would say some advice is, from my personal experience, is just to surround myself with good company, friends, family, those who remind me of who I was, you know? Not who I was, but like who I am and what's good about me, the positive qualities. Someone that's going to encourage me and, you know, keep me focused and, not let me wallow in that. I mean, it is healthy to cry and like, you know, stuff like that. I don't like to cry even when I'm by myself. So like I hold it in. That's one thing about me. I hold it in, but I hold it in too much. And then it comes out the wrong way. So in the moment, it's okay to cry um, and get your feelings out and stuff like that. But just spending time with people who genuinely care about you and know you well and can just like push you and encourage you to be to feel better. Also, just reflect, reflect on things that went well in the relationship. Like, what are the things that you actually liked about this person? You know, that it may have been like a toxic relationship and everything went bad, you know, but you can't, I think that if you focus on the negative of the relationship, like all these things were wrong and I saw this sign and this and this and that, 
and I should have left. I didn't know when to leave. Like you can't focus on the negative if you're trying to bounce back. You have to look at what went well in this relationship. If you look at the negative, it should be like, it's a quick reflection. Like I didn't like this. I didn't like that. I didn't appreciate this. I felt some type of way when this happened so that you know moving forward if your values change something that you learned about yourself through the relationship like what you won't tolerate moving forward you know things like that but it's not to wallow in what you should do is like write a list take a list down write a list down of things that you appreciate about that person what do they do for you that you appreciate you know and you don't have to share it with them you can if you want to but just say thank you Like, you know, there are good things in relationships. And I think when you walk away from a relationship, you should concentrate on that. Because if you don't, you're going to be miserable. And every situation you continue to become in, any relationship you find yourself in, it's possible that you're going to be focused on the negative. So it's, I read somewhere, where was it? I read somewhere that 80% of our thoughts are negative and we have to turn that right? If you want to move forward, you want to move on, you can't focus on all the things that upset you. You have to focus on the good. And finally, do things that you used to do before you met this person that actually made you happy. If you enjoy going to the movies, go to the movies. I enjoy going to the movies by myself. I love going to the movies. I love reading. I love going upstate and being by myself. I mean, I was doing that during the relationship too because I love my alone time, but do things that you did when you were single. Do those things. Whether it's spending more time with family, do that. Whether it's going shopping, online shopping, do that. Whether it's, you know, going to a concert or getting yourself pampered, do that. Do the things that make you happy. So yes, relationships can get better. If two people are willing to work at it, it can get better. Try. If you can't communicate with the the person that you're with, I don't know if that's a problem because they say that you can find somebody that can be like the middle person. But why? Like, if If you're planning on being with somebody long term and you don't know how to communicate, I think once or twice, yeah, I'm no expert, but... Having a conversation or having someone mediate the situation is great, but I really feel like it's important to learn how to communicate with the person that you're with. So every five seconds that you have a disagreement shouldn't be that you have to turn to somebody to mediate the situation or go to counseling. But yeah, healthy relationships are great. So no breaking up through text. Yes, the relationship can get better. Pay attention to the signs. Talk about it. Even if there are signs, it's not to say that it's over completely, right? But at the same time, that should be the opportunity when you're seeing those signs to address it with your partner and make sure that you're on the same page. It's really important. And if you decide that the relationship is not for you, it is okay. Step away, but do it politely. Have a good day, y'all. Thank you for listening.